The Galaxy Camera, Samsung's newest big experiment in the mobile space. We spent some time with one at IFA at its announcement. We had some hands-on time in New York City, and now we've got one in the Boston testing chamber. And we thought you'd like to see a brief glimpse of the custom Android software build powering this device. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is your guided tour of Android on the Samsung Galaxy Camera. We've seen plenty of coverage on the Galaxy Camera already, discussing everything from its 16-megapixel sensor with 21x optical zoom to its onboard Wi-Fi and 3G and 4G radios. But for this quick look, we want to take a gander at the Galaxy Camera's software. Our device, a Samsung EKGC100 running the latest updates, arrived with Android version 4.1.1. For those who haven't given the device much attention, yes, that is the same OS version most Android devices are running today, including the carrier-branded Galaxy S3 and Galaxy Note 2 we have here in the office. Everything, from the TouchWiz UI to the Project Butter improvements to Jelly Bean, feels very, very familiar here. There's a notification shade with the familiar shortcut toggles up top, an app launcher, and the usual suite of stock apps and widgets with the ability to buy more through the Google Play Store, of course. You can even run Android in portrait mode, if you're so inclined. In those respects, the Galaxy Camera is very much like many other Android smartphones, especially the Galaxy S3, with which it appears to share a display. But the Galaxy Camera's specialized software does differ predictably from its smartphone siblings in a few key areas. The most obvious distinction up front is the permanent camera shortcut in the lower left-hand corner of the screen here, which conveniently sticks around on all home screens. It only disappears if you hop into the application launcher or drop down the notification shade, or of course, if you are inside an app. But on all the home screens, it is persistent. You can also jump into the camera app from anywhere in the UI by pressing the shutter release key, which is nice. There's also been a change to the Android Home key row, the software now including Home, Back, and Menu instead of Home, Back, and Multitasking, which makes up for the lack of Samsung's traditional hardware menu button. Multitasking can still be achieved by pressing and holding the Home button. The behavior of the Power Standby key, located up top adjacent to the shutter release, is the same as on other devices, but it doesn't appear to be at first. Locking the camera is done normally, and unlocking it will restore the device to its previous state. That's normal, and it's handy, but locking the camera with the lens deployed will stow the lens. And then unlocking it while the camera was the last app opened will re-extend it. That's not the case if the last app open was, say, Facebook, or just the home screen. It takes a second to get used to, but it's logical and very, very convenient once you do. Speaking of the camera, the biggest difference is, of course, that camera app when we're talking about differences in this Android version. Samsung has ditched its standard layout for an entirely new and much more graphically intense UI. A tile or ribbon layout with smart shooting options is available over here to the right, with preset modes for everything from burst shot to long exposures to macro to backlight and many more. Additionally, expert mode allows manual tweaking of ISO, f-stop, shutter speed, and exposure in a pretty, if convoluted, simulation of physical lens controls. Also, half-pressing to focus prompts a pop-up in the viewfinder with ISO, f-stop, exposure info, and more. Finally, the smart shooting modes can also be accessed more quickly via a home screen widget, allowing users to jump right into the camera with a specific shooting mode already selected. The camera defaults to 5 megapixel shots, but you can take it all the way up to 16 if you want, as long as you're willing to do some hunting. The camera settings are hidden behind a very inconspicuous arrow icon next to the home shortcut here in the upper left, which took us longer to find than we'd like to admit. The settings menu also lets you control the video camera's resolution and frame rate, from lower res video at 120 FPS for slow-mo all the way up to 1080p. To cut that video to your liking, there's a new video editing app that offers a pretty robust selection of transitions and effects, as well as a fairly straightforward interface. For editing stills, the bundled Photo Wizard app provides the usual array of options for tweaking contrast, saturation, and so on, as well as a bundle of filters. 
If neither of those suit your liking, the whole Google Play Store is, of course, there for you. In all, the Galaxy Camera's Android build is a specialized platform that runs the camera hardware very nicely, but offers the full suite of Android functionality, except voice calls, alongside it. Whether that makes it worth buying for you will depend on your individual needs, but for shutterbugs looking for connectivity and customizability via apps, it doesn't get much better than the Galaxy Camera. Everyone, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the guided tour of the software on the Samsung Galaxy Camera. Stay tuned for more coverage on this device. This isn't the end of the road. We have another video coming tomorrow and a very special one coming next week. So stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss it. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. You can follow me. I'm at Captain Two Phones. That's Captain, the number two phones. Visit us at pocketnow.com for coverage on this device, other special Android devices, smartphones and tablets of all kinds, everything in the mobile space. Once again, pocketnow.com. Thank you for watching as always, and we'll see you next time.